Hi, I'm Christine Benz from Morningstar. One of the linchpins of a successful retirement plan is settling on a sustainable withdrawal rate. Joining me to share some recent research into this area is David Blanchett. He is head of retirement research for Morningstar Investment Management. David, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. David, you looked at uh, various strategies for setting withdrawal rates, and you calculated what you called the efficiency rate of each of these strategies. Let's look at what specifically you looked at when gauging the effic efficiency of withdrawal rate strategies. Okay, so if we think about pulling money from a portfolio. So the idea behind this paper is if you have a pool of assets, you're going to withdraw money for income during retirement. Um, how much can you take from the portfolio for your lifetime? And there's two key unknowns you have when you, when you first retire. Uh, the first is how long you're going to live. So you know, do you have to plan for a 10-year retirement period or a 30-year retirement period? And, and the, the market returns. So the better the market returns, the better you can take, the more you can take from a portfolio. And so the idea behind the research was to figure out how efficient a strategy is. So if you had known how long you're going to live and the returns you're going to receive, you can know exactly how much you could take out every year during retirement. And so what we did is we compared the, you know, the income you would use from different strategies against this efficient amount. So that, that creates the efficiency ratio, which is how much you actually received what you could have received if you had perfect information. So you tested various scenarios using different time periods as well as different portfolio performance to see which of the, the strategies was, in fact, the most efficient. Yeah, and so like the, and so the, the time period is based upon life expectancy. So we used, we kind of randomized life expectancy. Okay, so for someone who's 65 years old, they're going to live, say, 20 years. Well, sometimes they'll live two years, sometimes they'll live 40 years. Um, the idea is to kind of make that random based upon mortality tables and then also randomize the returns based upon kind of our forward-looking estimates and say, okay, given these all these different simulations, what can we kind of expect the portfolio to do if you'd known that information beforehand. Okay, so let's look at one of the most uh, commonly used methods, sort of the baseline strategy that you often hear about in the context of withdrawal rates. That's the 4% rule. So there you take 4% of your initial balance upon retirement, and then you just inflation adjust yes. that dollar amount. How did that do from an efficiency standpoint? Not very well. Okay. Um, I think like the 4% rule is kind of the is, is the research notion of retirement. It doesn't kind of mesh well with actual retirement because the 4% rule is, is a rule that you make at one point in time. So you would decide at age 65, I'm gonna take out 4% of my portfolio, so if a million dollars, $40,000 a year, and increase that every year by inflation. So you totally ignore um, other things that happen, your portfolio performance, your ongoing life expectancy. And so what you see with that is it's very inefficient because it doesn't, doesn't reflect what's happened in your life. It doesn't reflect if your portfolio goes way up in value, you can take more money out. It's a very kind of static decision that's kind of a one-off versus a more dynamic approach. Okay, so one of the things I know people love like about the 4% rule, though, is that it does let them take sort of a stable stream of income, that their income is knowable, which I think a lot of people like. Yes. Okay. But it isn't very efficient. Well, and so I guess, for example, like people don't buy cars and never have them looked at. You, you, you don't drive your car until it breaks down. You know, every, um, every now and then, every 3,000, 5,000 miles, whatever, uh, you'll take it in to get the oil changed. You'll have it looked at if the, if the brakes start working funny. And so it's the same concept with income during retirement. You know, you'd like to have kind of, you know, the same amount every year potentially, as long as you're alive, increased by inflation. But it's not practical given how life changes over a 10, 15, 20, 30 year time period. So you see as kind of a best practice, at the very least, you periodically check in and say, how's the market doing? Mm -hmm. And maybe I adjust my withdrawals up or down. It, it, once a year is a good kind of uh, benchmark for that. Okay, so let's look at another strategy commonly used among a lot of our Morningstar.com users. I know you call it the endowment approach, and that's where you take a fixed percentage rate per year, and you're more or less swung around by whatever your portfolio balance is doing. You can adjust up or down your portfolio withdrawals. Let's talk about how that strategy did from an efficiency standpoint. So if, if you think about a spectrum, um, you know, the, the, the least kind of dynamic uh, approach is, is the constant withdrawal amount, where you just take that, that same dollar amount every year increased by inflation. Endowment is kind of one step in the right direction, because what you're doing then is every year, you're taking out some percentage of your portfolio. And 
the, the good part about that is you, you can never be in ruin because if you're taking out, let's say, 5% a year, you know, even if your portfolio gets smaller and smaller and smaller, you still have a portfolio to withdraw assets from. And so that is a better approach because your income every year is based upon your portfolio performance. Okay. Now, let's finally talk about the strategy that you ultimately sell, settled on as the most efficient. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about um, what that strategy entails and, and how investors might incorporate it into their own retirement it, plan. Uh, we, it has a horrible name. It's called like dynamically updating mortality. Um, but the idea is that every year that you live, the odds are you're going to live longer. So, you know, someone who makes it to age 80 could live another 10 years. Um, and so what you do is you think about the two variables as you move through time. First is the portfolio performance, how the portfolio actually did, and the second is how long you're expected to live. And so every year you kind of say, okay, um, I, I lived one more year, my portfolio is up 10%, and I'm going to live another year longer. And then ba based upon that amount in your expected life expectancy, determine how much you can pull from the portfolio. So kind of just revisit the amount you can pull out every year based upon your life expectancy and your portfolio value. So that mortality updating piece is a component of required minimum distributions that people need to take from IRAs and 401ks and so forth. It is. So like there's, there's, there's the RMD method we also test as well, which is you know, if, you, if you're over the age of 70 and a half, you take out um, a certain percentage from your, your um, IRAs and 401ks uh, once a year. And that is one over your life expectancy. And that's also an efficient way as well, because if, for example, you have 20 years left, uh, you, you could take out one over 25% per year. And as your life expectancy decreases, you know, let's say you have 10 years left, you take out 10% per year. So that's also an efficient way to kind of figure out how much you can take from a portfolio very simply. So your approach, your optimal approach, combines that RMD method, which takes into account mortality, but also looks at per portfolio performance and, and melds the two. Okay, well, David, thank you so much for sharing this research. Very valuable. I know this is a hot topic among our Morningstar.com users. I think they'll really appreciate hearing from you. Thank you. Thanks for watching. I'm Christine Benz for Morningstar.com.